everyone here today wants unity and progress. And we don't just want to talk about it. Okay? We, we, we're here because we want to sit in action. And that's what the Multicultural Labour Organisation is here to progress. And you are part of this. This is history in the making. The Multicultural Labour Organisation thanks its generous sponsors, whose assistance with tonight's event has made a great deal of difference. The event sponsors are Prisma Marketing Hub, Red Earth Migration, wow, wow. Multilingual Australia, Blue Rose Celebrancy, Regal Beats Bookkeeping and Accounting Services, NV Photography, Environmental Engineers International, Spare Autos Perth, Cool Life Multimedia, Phase Healthcare, and Micro Lottie Coffee. Now, I have the great pleasure of introducing our key VIP speaker for the evening, the Premier of Western Australia, the Honourable Mark McGowan, BA, LLB, MLA. Hey, thanks so much, Karen, and thank you all for coming out tonight. It's lovely to see you all. I don't think we've had enough photos, so... Uh, <laughs> letting the side down when it comes to photos. Uh, can I uh, also acknowledge the uh, traditional owners of the land, the Wajak people of the Noongar Nation, their elders, past, present and emerging. I uh, know Minister Booty is here, a whole range of uh, members of parliament are here, probably some local government councillors, uh, but most importantly, um, members of the multicultural community of Western Australia. So thank you so much for coming out tonight for this very important launch. Uh, and of course, Carla, uh, has been the driving force behind uh, the formation uh, of this organisation. And I have seen her at maybe, I don't know, five events this year. And every event I've gone to, she's asked me if I would come to this launch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, every event I've said yes. And um, sadly, the date has moved on five separate occasions, I think. But here we are. So it's great to be here tonight with you all uh, for this uh, this auspicious occasion. Uh, it's always difficult to organise something, so uh, putting something on is terrific, Carla, and you and your team, thank you so much uh, for putting it all together. Uh, it is um, auspicious that we're doing this. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the nature of Australia uh, and uh, the fact that uh, we are one of the most successful multicultural communities in the world. It is the case that around the world, uh, particularly perhaps uh, similar countries to us, not so successful and haven't done it so well. And there's forces that are in play um, in some countries around the world that are not so inclusive and welcoming, um, so uh, engaging and so um, uh, prepared to uh, have uh, difference in their societies. Uh, we already, always got to guard against that because one of the great strengths of Australia and Western Australia, certainly over the last 60 years, has been the fact that we are so inclusive we are multicultural, we celebrate difference, we have lots of people from all over the world uh, who are loyal Australians and loyal West Australians but also uh, have uh, cultural heritages that they celebrate and um, engage in. Uh, and there's some people around the world who don't like, there's some people in Australia who don't like that. Fortunately in our country, it's a small minority that don't. And uh, each election they're normally thumped. And so when you're one nation parties and fellow travellers are out there um, advocating disunity and division and hatred, uh, the vast, vast, overwhelming majority of Australians reject that. And we reject that. And we won't preference them. And we won't give them any support in any way, shape or form. And that has been our policy for many years now. Multicultural Australia has been around for a long time. Turns out, I learned today, uh, they think the first... Um, Chinese immigrant to Western Australia arrived in 1829, which of course was when the first uh, British settlers arrived in Western Australia. His name was Moon Chow, and there's a street in Northbridge called Moon Street, you might know, named after him. He came out and made a life here, got married, had three children, he set up a successful business, very familiar story isn't it? And uh, he uh, lived here until 1877, where sadly, uh, he was run over by a horse and cart and killed. Uh, his death resulted in the first um, traffic laws, speed limit laws 
in Western Australia where they had to actually put in laws uh, to stop speeding uh, in, uh, I think it was Fremantle, they restricted in Fremantle, the council or whatever put in, the roads board put it in place and restricted speeding. So speeding in Fremantle is not new. And, uh, <laughs> and dangerous driving in the southern suburbs, which I'm aware of, is not new. <laughs> but he was the first um, person uh, that we are aware of, of Chinese uh, background, who arrived in Western Australia. So multicultural uh, Western Australia and Australia goes back a very uh, long way. Uh, of course, there were laws, and they were discriminatory laws. Uh, against uh, people of uh, non-European backgrounds and they are in place uh, for many years up until really the last eradication of them it was in the 1970s where we went to non-discriminatory immigration policies. Uh, it's amazing to think that in my lifetime we actually had discriminatory laws against people uh, based upon their race or their background or their country of origin but we did in my lifetime. Fortunately there was uh, people uh, in political life uh, nationally who saw the inequity of this and the fact that it needed to change uh, for a whole range of reasons, just the fundamental um, impropriety or incorrectness of that policy, but also the fact that we actually live in a world in which there are countries of other backgrounds and trying to be a bastion of mono monoculture in that world uh, would be de very difficult for a country the size of Australia. So both for principled and practical reasons, people saw that that was the wrong thing to do. Uh, and uh, so people, and I think the main, main person responsible for the change of policy, I was actually a, a great Australian by the name of Gough Whitlam, who was Prime Minister from 1972 uh, to 1975. And he promoted in the 1950s and 1960s a change uh, to Australia's immigration and, uh, and other policies to allow for uh, people of diverse backgrounds to come to this country. Uh, and uh, implemented the final um, or implemented that policy in its final form in 1973. And so that's how Australia has changed. And since then, we are a very multicultural community. I grew up in mainly small country towns in northern New South Wales. Um, I really didn't know anyone uh, of uh, diverse background. Um, I didn't know many people. I knew a few, but not many people of diverse background. My life these days is so incredibly different and so much more interesting and so much more... Um, so much more fulfilling uh, to meet people of all different backgrounds uh, who are all loyal Australians and loyal West Australians but bring so much to our community. And that's what multiculturalism is about. People who come here, work hard, um, add something, uh, bring culture, but engage and are an important part of Australian society. These days in our parliament, we have so many people of diverse backgrounds. Um, I don't want to name them all because I know I'll miss some, but I saw here uh, Pia Yang, uh, who was born in China, came to Australia, became an Australian Army officer, got elected to the West Australian Parliament. Tony Butti, uh, of Italian heritage. Uh, Aor Chorwat, uh, I'm not sure if Aor's here, but Aor from Africa, uh, Aor uh, from, uh, from, uh, from uh, Africa, who's come to um, uh, Western Australia made a life, got elected to the West Australian Parliament. And then we have our uh, Indian uh, sub-caucus, uh, made up of, um, uh, of Yasma Barakai uh, and uh, Kevin Michelle uh, and Dr Jags. Now I'm not sure if those three are here, uh, but that's really quite a remarkable thing, uh, that we have three Indian-born members of the West Australian Parliament. We have more Indian-born members of the lower house in Western Australia than the Liberal Party has MPs. <laughs> it's really quite extraordinary when you think about it. Uh, and each of them uh, adds so much to our parliament. And there is so many more uh, people of diverse background in parliamentary life in Western Australia. In the federal parliament, of course, now we have, um, uh, we have so many uh, people, but one I just want to mention, uh, Sam, uh, Sam uh, Lim, a uh, member for Tangney, uh, who uh, is really quite, um, quite famous in Canberra. They've never ever met anyone who was a dolphin trainer <laughs> who became a member of federal parliament. And uh, somehow Sam uh, took a safe Liberal seat and is over in Canberra. And he's, uh, he's, uh, I think he's quite loved. Uh, he's uh, such an extraordinary human being. 
uh, who is now a member of the federal parliament. But of course, people come to Australia, uh, make a life, and Labor wants to, wants to have you as part of our party and support you. So often, um, people of multicultural background come here with nothing. The clothes on your back, from a difficult background. Um, your two hands, your brain, um, your experience, your family perhaps, and you give up so much to come here. And so often, so much of what has been built in this country has been built by people of that background. Um, you know, so many of our, um, our, of our, so much of our infrastructure, of our industry, uh, of our community, so many people who work in social services, uh, in areas looking after aged care and disability care, the people who work in our meat works and our farms, um, so many people in retail, our universities, our medical care, uh, it's really quite extraordinary. Our community could not function without multicultural Australia. Uh, and uh, we want to make sure that people are appropriately respected and rewarded and treated fairly, uh, with compassion and decency, and the backgrounds that you come from, is uh, the people of multicultural background come from, uh, is acknowledged and respected. That we provide the services that are needed, the public education, the public health, the language classes, the support, the training, uh, to give people the best opportunities in life. A beautiful environment uh, in which we can live freely and happily in the most amazing of surrounds. Affordable housing uh, and the like for people uh, who might not have a lot of money, who need that uh, to get started in life. Uh, it's very important that government has that role and that uh, we continue to promote a community and a society that offers that to our citizens. Other countries don't do it. Similar countries to Australia don't do it. We do it so well in this country, and it's so well ingrained and so well respected, I hope it's never lost. In Western Australia, of course, 32% of our citizens were born overseas. 32%. There's something like, whatever, however many countries in the world there are, there's someone in Western Australia from every one of those, 180 or so countries. Uh, there is 32% uh, born overseas, there's around 18% born in the Eastern States, those uh, poor downtrodden people like me, uh, and um, rest born locally. It's really quite an extraordinary story that it's that strong. And we want to make sure that people of multicultural backgrounds' lives are rewarding and fulfilling uh, and uh, continue to contribute to our community in the ways uh, that, that, that we do. So can I thank you uh, for coming along tonight? Can I encourage you to continue to be members and support uh, so we can continue to take this state from strength to strength and we can continue to create a better community and society here, successful and prosperous? continue to fix the long-standing issues confronting our state uh, and uh, provide that support to your local MP or candidate, to your local branch, in whatever way it is. If you want to run for office, please do it, in whatever way it is. It's a great opportunity to contribute to our society. Can I thank you all for coming and can I uh, acknowledge the formation of the Multicultural Labour Organisation? Long may it continue. Thank you. <laughs>
Government is committed to all communities working together for one purpose, a more equal and fair Australia. Please welcome a woman I'm personally very proud of and someone I deeply admire, the founder and president of the multicultural labour organisation, Gala It's a substantial achievement for all of us. Today, Australians from all backgrounds and professions are here for one purpose, a more equal and fair Australia. For this reason, we would like to acknowledge our Premier Mark McGowan for his ongoing support of our movement. Premier, your leadership and determination for making Western Australia the strongest state in our country, has created a legacy for future generations. Thank you to our Minister for Citizenship and Multicultural Interest, Tony Booty. Thank you, Minister. Thank you to all members of Parliament here, our MLO executive, volunteers, for, uh, sponsors for coming. Thank you as well to Ellie Whitega. Well, she's not here, but thank you to Ellie. Thank you, Lauren. You are such a strong and progressive leaders, women of change and action. Friends, we are the most diverse country in the world. Our population is rich in cultural and linguistic traditions. Half of our population was born overseas, or has at least one parent born overseas. People like you and me, from diverse backgrounds, live, work, and study in Western Australia. This state was built with the help of multicultural communities, and our economy continued to develop through trade with Asia, Europe, Africa, and the American continent. Our economy continued to grow, adding new people with skills, knowledge, and innovation to our workforce. We acknowledge the success of our past in creating our diverse society, but we must keep working on what we need to improve. We are here today because it's time to think differently. Fresh ideas, state vision, progress. Since Whitlam, Hawke, and now the Albanese government, Labour has been leading a strong efforts to place multiculturalism as part of our national identity. Labour has faced up the challenge of responding effectively to the increasing diversity of our contemporary society. Australia's Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese's victory was and will be a victory for multiculturalism and for this nation. Can you imagine 50 years ago or a decade ago, someone with a non-Anglo-Celtic surname being our prime minister? Or someone with the surname Wong being the leader of the Senate? This is not a dream. This is reality and this is labor. Yeah. It's making history. By demonstrating to the rest of the country that Western Australia listens to all members of the community because the future is on our side. As Australians, it's time to think differently. 
We are a new generation with a more progressive and inclusive narrative. We have the qualifications, skills, and experience to contribute. And the multicultural labor organization has a clear agenda for the future. We understand the reality of our past, but more importantly, we are a collective that seeks to represent the future and human potential of this country. We're working based on community consultation. We see a future that delivers the empowerment, participation, and engagement of every Western Australian, because we are united for the benefit of this state. Our objectives are clear. We are the first labor organization in Australia that promotes a political empowerment and participation to multicultural communities. We are a bridge between WA labor and the community. This means we give a voice to the people. We want the diversity that we see in the streets to be seen at every level of the society, from the parliament to the boardroom. Woo! <laughs> we believe that Western Australians from multicultural communities are the best decision makers on the issues and policies that impact them. This means we are committed to listening, learning, and acting. But why is this important? Let's look at what we want to improve based on the experience of people in Western Australia. During the last year, we have been very active, having hundreds of conversations in the community. This, this is what people have told us. Employment, highly qualified engineers, doctors, and all kinds of professionals are waiting for years to be registered and gain employment in their area of qualification. Instead, they are workers are cleaners, taxi drivers, and gardeners. And many, many just give up. Australia loses talent and taxes every year. It's time to think differently. Yes. Access to services. One size doesn't fit all. We need to think about what happened when cultural awareness is low and well, consultation with communities is not core business. We need to understand that a more diverse workforce is better at serving the needs of our diverse population. Why? Language skills, cultural competence, and innovation. It's time to think differently. A strategic funding. Historically, millions of dollars has been spent on festivals and events. Community leaders volunteer hundreds of hours on staging, dancing, and cooking. At the same time, their community members are just asking for work experience, quality jobs, youth and women development programs. It's time to think differently. Systematic discrimination. Systemic racism is hidden in attitudes and words such as cultural fit, lack of Australian work experience, and diversity fatigue. We need to keep working on the transformational changes that our people are asking for. This is what people told us they are facing every day. That's why it's time to think differently. Yes. We, take up this, we take up this challenge to develop a new model because we are labor. We do not fear the future that is based on our people's ideas. We welcome them. Australia, we are ready for this. This is our cause and it's time. I am an Australian that was born overseas and I understand the feeling 
to leave your entire family in another country and know that you won't see them for years. The frustration to start your career again from zero. The challenge to speak a different language and have a funny accent. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm grateful, I'm grateful to live in a country where we can tuck our children in at night and know that they are safe and fed at home. Yes. Exactly. A country where we can say or write what we think. Yep. A country where we can participate in the yeah. I feel it. Like, yes, thank you. A country where we can participate in political processes without fear. Yes. Friends, Australia is our present, and we have the future of us and our kids in our hands. We need to build a nation where everyone has a strong sense of belonging, and everyone has more opportunities. Yes. Yes. The Multicultural Labor Organization is for all of you. For those that believe in a more equal and fair society, we are all Australians, no matter the color of our skin and background. Yes. This is clearly a collective effort. Let's build a strong Western Australia together. We must work, not wait. If you feel the same energy or urgency that we feel, please join the Multicultural Labour Organization and join Labour Party. We are here to serve the community. My name is Carla Benitez. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.